Today we are bringing you some deep thoughts for construction estimators. It's true. And our deep thoughts this week is brought to you by Norm Foster. This book first published in 1961. Let's do it. Called Construction Estimates from Takeoff to Bid. In this helpful book, Mr. Foster reminds all contractors a good estimate is built around a good set of quantities and a proper feeling for cost rather than being a byproduct of statistics. So if you want better outcomes in your construction estimates, this sounds great. Focus on a good set of quantities or what we have termed here at the Diojo thorough data capture and a proper filling for cost, which mirrors what we have termed accurate data input. Stick around as we discuss a simple formula for better construction estimates. Hi everybody out there, Joe Donation. As a contractor, every day is a fight for survival. Oh. What the hell are we doing here, Harry? The Ojo is the do your own job dojo. Sweep the leg. Curated by John Isaacson. Contractor. Guy is back to home. Author. There's nothing like it out there. And mediocre podcast host. Nicely done on keeping it together. The, the Diojo Podcast. We should be listening to you. Helping contractors shorten their dang learning curve. Only here on the Diojo Podcast, folks. The inventor of the Diojo Podcast. Before we dive into this week's delicious topic, let's recap our conversation from the last episode. In addition to sharing about the exciting record-breaking year we had for September 2023, September re re record alert, the efforts of contractors throughout the United States and Canada to raise new socks for local charities, this year, Restorers set a record. You like that? Raising over 72,000 pairs of new socks for local charities. And that's teams that raised 30 pairs of socks all the way, obviously, to the winner that raised 10,794 pairs. Thank you all for making this another successful year. People care about the heart of a company. This is one of the best ways that you can market without marketing, yeah. right? Like yeah. you're building such great brand recognition and showing that your company really, really cares. Sock, 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 sock. We had some excellent input from contractors who are investing in the future of the skilled trades. You can only control what you can control, what mm -hmm. you do. I want to make sure no one missed the truth bombs that Nicole Humber CEO of Bravo Restoration in Windsor, California, California shared. So I've been really involved in those schools coming back and either being a presenter and mm -hmm. talking about our specific trade or being a mentor for women, uh, like women students that are interested, but not like they only see males. So they think that's all allowed. Um, we have a couple of programs outside of schools that uh, focus in on, you know, ages 16 to 24 or right after high school. And so uh, I just get involved in those. What are some of those um, words of encouragement for people that maybe are feeling like, man, why am I doing this? Do I need to stick with it? How do I break through barriers? You can only control what you can control and what mm. you do. You can't control what other people say or do. or or. And so it's like, what you can control is what you experience. And so when people are in these establishments that they're like, I can't quite break through this barrier. I feel like there's a, ce a, a, a glass ceiling. I just, I see it, but I can't get there. Is invest in yourself. So invest in reading leadership books, invest in, you know, if you have to pay for your own IICRC classes, do that, do your research, uh, become an expert in the industry where it makes it yeah. impossible for anyone to put the lid over you. If we've got owners and managers listening, um, turn it up just a little bit. And uh, definitely for those of you that are working and earnestly to grow your career, you're going to want to hear this next part. If you don't have a leader that is invested in your growth, then you have to invest in yourself. With a live mic and at the speed of light, with a hearty, flame your dang learning curve. You have entered the DLJO podcast. The topic today, which we've already introduced, is a simple formula for better construction estimates. I'm preparing for a class 
the beginning of 2024 that I'm teaching on estimating concepts. And I've been researching various authors, various approaches, case studies, and resources to share with the class. And they don't think I know a buttload of crap about the gospel, but I do. As I've already admitted, I am a sucker for old books. A good estimate is built around a good set of quantities and a proper feeling for cost. And I love to find older books that share a bit of the history of our industry. Um, so I can compare and contrast the best practices from past and present. What I find is history often demonstrates that there's nothing new under the sun. The problems are similar as you span time and often the solutions are much simpler than we want to believe them to be. In our industry, people look for the highest tech solution yeah. rather than the lowest tech solution. And yeah. I think we should look for the lowest tech solution that'll work first before we go to any higher tech yeah. solution. So this gaining ground is often less a battle for new knowledge than it is developing the discipline to execute on what we already know. This should not dismiss the importance of adaptation, but rather our job is to understand the principles, break them into processes that our teams can execute. And for most people in a position of leadership, this means making the concepts clear and as simple as possible. Clarity, consistency, and accountability. Our good friend and industry legend Cliff Zotnick joined us back on episode 96 to share some of the insights from his vast career. This is, I think, a lot about complication, John. People can be made to feel helpless. And I think that's what happens with a lot of these products. They give you this really sophisticated sales pitch. There's all kinds of numbers and there's equations and math. And like more, none of us are good at math. And people figure that they don't understand it. Therefore, the person who invented it smarter than I am. Ask them to explain to you simply how does it work? Imagine that I'm a six-year-old. Explain it to me. Yeah. And if these people cannot explain it to a six-year-old, according to Albert Einstein, they don't understand it themselves. If you listen to the podcast regularly, I hope you recognize this article uh, or this, this magazine. This is one of my prized possessions, a physical copy of Cleaning and Restoration magazine from March 2007, the Founding Fathers of Restoration ep issue. This has the article from my good friend Pete Consigli. Hi, everybody out there, JoJo Nation. This is the Global Watchdog, Pete Consigli. The Four Faces of Mount Restoration, Taking the Best of the Past to Build for the Future. Cliff and Pete. If you want to get to know them, they're normally together Pete's event, the winter break. And uh, most, of, most of the time they still attend the Restoration Industry Association this year, 2024. It's going to be in Dallas. As we prepare for the Restoration Industry Association convention in April of 2024, I want to share a few of my okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. gem number one. Bring people all the way up until the last minute. We are actually over a thousand attendees, which is record breaking attendance for any RIA convention. The 2023 convention set records for attendance. RA has really grown in the last, last few years, like a rebirth. The clip from Clean Facts Magazine with media director Jeff Cross and RAA president Katie Smith, two of the fine characters you can meet at the next convention. I'm trying to get everybody in the door so that they can have access to all of our member benefits, especially our advocacy benefits. The networking is awesome. We had a great industry party last night with Hundreds and hundreds of people all just getting together, having a good time, building relationships and expanding their network. And we've got a great trade show. Uncut John. I encourage you to read the article if you haven't already. Freshen up on it if you've read it before. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Dallas and we can talk in person. I yeah. think we should look for the lowest tech solution that'll work first before we go to any higher tech yeah. solution. This ties into what we talk about frequently in the books and on this podcast and when we do coaching and consulting. It really does come down to three things. Clarity, consistency, and accountability. So as we look at estimating a simple formula for better construction estimates. But if we don't have the 
base understanding of what it takes to draft an estimate without a software program. And what Bebo Crane said on episode 108, you know, as a contract held accountable for our actions, they're going to be looked at what we can prove at that time, not necessarily what we actually did. The yeah. simpler, the better, or the more understood, the better. We want to thank our sponsor. I will not bow to any sponsor. Epic Estimates. Any estimate. Anywhere. Anytime. Let the award-winning Epic Estimates help your team write the next Xactimate or Symbility Estimate. Freeing your team up to do what they're good at while helping your business maximize productivity and profitability. The Restoration Industry Association. Connect and collaborate with your industry peers through the largest nonprofit professional trade association dedicated to the unique plight of restoration contractors. Join us April 8th through 10th, 2024 in Dallas. Texas for the RIA Convention and Industry Expo. Discounts are available for early registration. So You Want to Be a Project Manager, the third book from John Isaacson written to help those wanting to advance their careers in the skilled trades. This book covers the mindsets and habits for construction project management with an emphasis on property restoration. Washington Business Brokers partners with business owners to confidentially explore selling their business with discreet, objective counsel, as well as in insight into market activity and comparable private transactions. In Circle, the only all-in-one field documentation solution, visually document and present high-quality reports so there are no questions asked. Their floor plan tool now integrates with Xactimate to create an ESX for estimating. Thank you to our sponsors. Please let them know that you heard about them on the D.O. Joe Podcast. The Avenger, the D.O. Joe Podcast. A job always comes down to the agreed upon scope, the duration, and the cost. Obviously, scope precedes the other two. How to suck less at estimating. We want to set the right expectations. It's helpful to understand the home improvement show mentality, right? I need to get you over here right away. You got to look at this. What does the contractor do? I'll be right over right away. I'm going to take a look at this. Every time on a home improvement show. What do you think? What do you think? What are you, what are you thinking? This is definitely, this is definitely going to cost at least $1,500. When, when can you start? When can you get started? This is holding everything up. I could get started this afternoon. I'll just pull 14 guys from my other crew in addition to the 14 guys already working. They're already here. They already started. How to suck less at estimating. So did that interaction with the TV show contractor, I'll be right over right away, answer scope, duration, or cost? Remember, obviously scope precedes the other two, but the only answer that people often are focusing on is the cost. This is definitely going to cost at least $1,500. When we work backwards from the cost, that's not always the best way to make sure that we're being thorough or accurate or setting ourselves up for success. This book first published in 1961 called Construction Estimates from Takeoff to Bid. A good estimate is built around a good set of quantities and a proper feeling for cost, rather than being a byproduct of statistics. Phases of an insurance claims estimate. Phase one customer is going to be observe and document the conditions of the damaged property, what we call the thorough data capture, the TDC. But but, but the two questions every customer asks. Mm -hmm. When can you start? Mm -hmm. And how much is this going to cost? Maybe not always in that order. Maybe in reverse order. Mm -hmm. How much is this going to cost? Mm -hmm. And when can you start? Mm -hmm. So in this process of educating our clients, whether it's the home and garden show, contractor. When can you start? When can you get start? Joe Public looking to remodel or repair their home. How much is this going to cost? Or a large investor that wants to work with you on multiple projects. This sounds great. So that's great. We'd love to answer those questions, but first we really need to zero in on and clarify what the scope is because... Obviously, scope precedes the other two. So what does every project have in common? And what are the three questions ultimately we need to answer before we can put a solid price on something? A job always comes down to the agreed upon scope, the duration, and the cost. How to suck less at estimating. 
and then we're going to compose and communicate the proposed scope and the estimated cost, our accurate data input into whether that estimating software is Xactimate, lump sum, whatever it is, there's some form of data entry where we're transferring what we've observed. Guy inspector home. <laughs> into some document that we believe is supported, typically sketch. Dad is not sketchy. Lots of labeled photos. Traditionally, if all your texts are going out is with a camera, you want four corners of the room because then you can see everything. The beauty of the 360. Add the room. Take the shot. Now when I take pictures as comments, they'll be labeled for that room. Once they've uploaded that, whoever has access to your account has access to that 360 degrees. And we're going to present that to the customer and the insurance carrier. Remember, thorough data capture, TDC, plus accurate data input, ADI, equals a defensible estimate, DE. How to suck less at estimating. Excited to announce that our best-selling book, How to Suck Less at Estimating, Habits for Better Project Outcomes by John Isaacson, The Intentional Restorer, is now available. This is a full color. It's got diagrams. Well, this book is also a course available online through our friends at Restoration Technical Institute, rtilearning.com. This course has six modules, which reflect the six chapters in this book. If you sign up for the course, you get a free PDF copy that is designed to correspond with the course. How to suck less at estimating. This book is available on Amazon. It's true. <laughs> yeah, okay buddy, blah, blah, blah. Xactimate can be a common language between a contractor familiar with the insurance process and an adjuster trying to negotiate the accurate scope. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, people are right. This guy is just an Xactimate apologist. Xactimate can be a common language. Okay, I mean, this is complete hogwash. I think it's important to stop there. I clipped and reclipped that. Xactimate can be a common language. To make the point, all estimating platforms and in particular Xactimate, the one that we're most familiar with in the restoration space, are communication platforms first and foremost. So in the insurance world, for those who may not be aware, Xactimate estimates are written room by room, line by line. It's not a format that many contractors outside of the restoration space are familiar with, um, nor are customers. They're not used to seeing, you know, you know 28 pages for a two-room project, right? But who, hmm, who is familiar with that format? Oh, insurance companies. Complicating the claim. Who also has the money when it's a restoration insurance claims project? Oh, that's right, the insurance companies. So if they have the money and you want to work with them, or maybe you don't want to work with them, but you're working for a customer that's getting their money from them, perhaps it's helpful before you want to pull all of your hair out, to think of Xactimate as a communication platform more than it is just an estimating platform. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so let me explain. Xactimate estimates are built with a diagram or a sketch. There's actually a lot of really helpful calculations, scope notes, and different things that can be derived from this tool. So Xactimate estimates also allow you to forward photos that are labeled in correlation to the rooms and the scope that you're going to be referring to in your estimate. A labeled photo helps prevent many unnecessary headaches. For example, a photo labeled kitchen cabinet base section one face damage replaced the box. Some people may say that's way too many details, but it's much more helpful than image 1008 or a cabinet broken. The adjuster can understand, claims rep can understand, the client can understand, the production team can understand. Oh, subcontractors can understand. This is what this photo is telling me. Before you resort, as many do, to simply blaming the estimating tool. This guy is just an Xactimate apologist. Stop and think about your processes. Your processes. Does your team regularly, regularly create an estimate that the insurance company, the entity with the money, 
the customer, the entity with the pen, uh, to sign the contract, and the production team, the ones who have to complete the work, all understand. If one or all of those parties don't understand the scope, you need to fix your estimating process. Some of those cost items, in our experience, cabinets, floors, countertops, a few other things are likely going to need to be supplemented. Doesn't mean that it's a bad program. Not really. <laughs> Maybe. It's average pricing, standardized. It's classified. So we'll get specialists in here to try to confirm some of those things or if you know exactly you know what the price range is and you have some of that data that can be an, a more expedient way we're doing the thorough data capture here on your property thorough data capture we're going to do accurate data input present that to the insurance company and you accurate data input phase two if you have any questions about our bid, we'll answer those, or if the carrier has any questions, and tell us which line items they feel are not supported by the documentation, via the sketch, the labeled photos, and the copious amounts of F9, F9 notes, scope notes that we have in our estimate. You'll see, very, very detailed. We do it structured, so it's easy to read, as easy to read as possible. The yeah. simpler, the better, or the more understood, the better. In the property restoration realm, obviously, you're on the other side. Of the, the bad part. guys. Yeah, the bad guys, right? Or the good guys, you know, it depends on yeah. your point of view. Mm. If you understand what our prior point was as far as all estimating platforms are communication platforms, then the next piece that you need to understand is that all estimates are data driven. So if you do not understand the scope, data point number one, you won't be able to price the estimate correctly. Well, dang it. In projects outside of insurance, there's, you know, RFP, uh, other requests for bids and those kinds of things. And there, it is as important to understand what is in this scope, what is not is it in this scope, what are the risk points, who are we pricing this for, you know, what are some of the historical data points related to scope and cost and productivity, how soon the project's gonna be paid, those kinds of things. A job always comes down to the agreed upon scope, the duration and the cost. And the same goes for insurance estimating, just maybe the platform is a little bit differently. Let's take Xactimate for example, and you could fill in the blank with another estimating platform. Say you have someone skilled in the platform. Maybe you have them internally or you have a remote resource but obviously they cannot, if you want to scale, they can't get out to every project. So if the skill you have, one of the skilled areas you have is somebody that knows how to do the data input into the estimating platform, then you can find and train other people that can get the data, the data capture to the data input. So what that might look like is utilizing various technologies, whether it's the 360 degree captures, videos, tons of photos, labeled photos, scope notes. We always ask people, please do, whoever's doing the inspection, just do a verbal walkthrough of what you think the scope needs to be. And even people that aren't skilled in construction can at least articulate. Well, I'm seeing that drywall's removed here. I'm seeing the floor's been removed here. It looks like something under the floor has also been removed. You know, maybe they don't yet have the terminology, but they can articulate if you train them properly by utilizing technology and other resources. If we can get as much data to the estimator, then they can create an, the data entry into the estimating platform. Maximize their ability to write as much as possible by keeping them you know, in front of the computer. No fluff. The other is maybe you have limited skills in the estimator, so but you have solid project managers or carpenters or other people, mitigation technicians that really know their scopes. So send someone out, again, utilizing those tools. They're doing video walkthroughs. They're explaining what the scope is. The key point there is what are the things that we're going to need to do that don't fit nicely into the box of the standardized estimating so that we can communicate maybe that a different way 
or get on the phone with the, the customer or the carrier and explain ourselves utilizing your resources. And so if they fill out a tick sheet or use other ways that communicate in a way that the other person is, is definitely just acting as data entry. I'm just entering in what you told me to enter in. And, and they can spend the time to search things up or try to find other things. What is the common thread there? It's da da data. How do you get the da da data from the actual work site to the person that's creating the estimate. We call it data entry because whether you're using an Excel spreadsheet, you're doing it by hand, the old school way, you're using an estimating platform, you're transferring the data, data that you've gathered into the, the program. The things you need to ask, what is your approach? What are your strengths internally? How can you build on those? What are your weaknesses? How can you acquire external resources that maybe supplement? Not ever like always hiring somebody, but maybe you can outsource some of that. What is your process for internal review before the estimate goes out and once it's approved and when you're ready to contract? And then what are your results? Are you getting the results that you want? If you're not tracking it, creating data, data, data again to say, man, for insurance company X, we've written 25 estimates in the last two months and we've won. X number of them and X number of them have been profitable. What is the reason that Y number of them have not been profitable? And then actually dig into, well, it's because that it's clearly because that insurance company is a bunch of locusts. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's something else that you can learn from again by gathering the data, 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 thorough data capture. Some of the things that the estimator should be consistently responsible for is a quality diagram, right? A good sketch is a good start. That's right. Thorough data capture. Uh, with clear room labels plus quality photos. You can never have, that's right, too many photos. Thorough data capture. And they need to be clearly labeled to be uh, helpful and effective like it. I've called this the living room. So now every photo I take once I download it is going to say living room plus whatever description I put in. So that's a nice feature. A quality estimate written in the flow of the work with clear scope notes. Accurate data input. So even if you don't use Xactimate in a later module, we'll um, talk about headers and why we use those. The art, art, art and science, science, science of estimating. Oh, I think it's very important for an estimator to always write with production in mind. Accurate data input. Always write with production in mind. We spend all this time putting an estimate together. Make sure those are transferable to your production team so that they can produce the work. The yeah. simpler, the better. Or the more understood, the better. Great story, compelling and rich. Thank you for tuning in to the Diojo podcast. We hope you were informed. Yeah, so I've learned something here. And entertained. Are you not entertained? dyojo.com forward slash podcast. You can buy John a beer, you can support the show, or you can buy one of the books I've written. The last one being How to Suck Less at Estimating. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and you can find them on Amazon. There's nothing like it out there. A good estimate is built around a good set of quantities and a proper feeling for cost, rather than being a byproduct of statistics. Yeah. I think there's a tremendous amount of that, uh, you know, in the industry with these real complicated uh, solutions. And, and the simpler, the better oftentimes. Oh, yeah. No, ab absolutely. I, I think in, in, our, in our industry, people look for the highest tech solution yeah. rather than the lowest tech solution. And yeah. I think we should look for the lowest tech solution that will work first before we go to any higher tech yeah. solution. This ties into what we talk about frequently in the books and on this podcast and when we do coaching and consulting. It really does come down to three things. Clarity, consistency, and accountability. So as we look at estimating a simple formula for better construction estimates, there may be technologies that help us be more efficient and effective in certain areas. But if we don't have the base understanding of what it takes to create our quantities, do a site assessment, draft an estimate without a software program, you know, so that we're asking ourselves, does this project make sense for us? Can we execute this successfully 
you know, both from a productivity standpoint as well as a profitability standpoint. You know, as a contract held accountable for our action. And then asking ourselves, have we, through that estimating process, communicated to our, our customer if the carrier's involved because they're financing the project? And then our production team, is there clarity, consistency, and accountability? And what Bebo Crane said on episode 108 when we were dissecting a project from Arlington, Texas, where a contractor actually went bankrupt. You know, as a contract held accountable for our actions, they're going to be looked at what we can prove at that time, not necessarily what we actually did. The yeah. simpler, the better, or the more understood, the better. Had they focused more on clarity between all the parties in the project, consistency in their efforts and their processes, and then creating accountability for themselves, as well as those that they're contracting with. And if these people cannot explain it to a six-year-old, according to Albert Einstein, they don't understand it themselves. What the industry needs is conversations like this. Thursdays are four. The Ojo Podcast. What are you, stupid? My, my mindset change. Helping contractors shorten their dang, dang, dang learning curve. Once you get to the point where you're not willing to listen or not willing to learn, we pound sand. The Ojo Podcast. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. complete hogwash.